Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. My name is William Thompson. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Victoria. Today, I'm going to show you how we can load and visualize astronomical data using the package astroimages.jl. Uh, this is a package that was originally created by Mose Giordano, and I've recently been working on expanding it. So almost all astronomical data either starts its life or ends up as an image, uh, but these aren't necessarily images like we would take on a digital camera. For one, they're often taken in wavelength ranges that aren't visible to the human eye, for example, like uh, the infrared or even ultraviolet. Uh, and while a picture might be worth a thousand words, these images often don't speak for themselves. Uh, the metadata of how the images were captured and processed is uh, just as important for understanding uh, the data they contain. Uh, so one of the most for common formats used by astronomers are FITS files. Uh, so a FITS file or a flexible image transport system file combines one or more uh, images and tables into something into uh, units called header data units. Uh, or HDUs. So each HDU contains, in addition to the data, uh, key and value and comment uh, pairs that define how the data was captured and what it means. Uh, these also embed uh, detailed information about where the image was taken in the sky, uh, the units of the data, uh, et cetera. So let's load three HDUs from this FITS file that I have. Um, so we use the, the standard file IO load function. Uh, thanks to the integration with Astro Images. So uh, we can uh, grab one slice out of the second HDU, and uh, right away it's rendered automatically uh, to an image in my Pluto notebook. Uh, and this shows a debris disk captured by the Gemini Planet Imager. Uh, so this is in false color. The, the real uh, true wavelength of this data is in the, uh, the near infrared. And this is actually captured in different polarization slices. Um, so it gets rendered automatically to the screen, uh, these astro images that you load. Um, but the element type of the underlying data stays uh, in whatever format it was on disk. So in this case, a float 32. Uh, so the mapping of your data to uh, an image that a human can see is all done lazily, and the data stays in its original format. So we can access, for example, the original pixel value at 100, 100, and the second slice of the cube. Um, if we display it in a, uh, a plain text environment like a terminal, you get something that looks more like the standard array output uh, here um, with some information recorded by dimensional data, which is one of the packages used to build this. Uh, so we can access the header metadata directly uh, as well. So we just put in the string, uh, the key that we want to access, in this case, the detector temperature. This is the temperature of the actual camera detector at the telescope in Kelvins uh, when this image was captured, um, in this case, 82 or 83 degrees Kelvin. Uh, we can also access the comment to understand what that uh, header means. Uh, we can also dump all the header uh, for that, for this particular file. And there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of keys. Uh, so anyways, returning to the images, uh, here is a much more famous image. This is an uh, image of the Eagle Nebula captured by the Hubble Space Telescope uh, in a narrow band filter. Uh, so we can load that up just using load, uh, and it gets displayed automatically just as before. Um, now, uh, whenever you display an uh, astro image uh, in a rich text environment, a rich environment like this, uh, it calls the function called uh, imview automatically. But we can call imview on any uh, array that we have. So, for example, here is imview called on this uh, two by two matrix to visualize it with the variety's color map. Uh, and imview has lots of different functions for customizing how images are displayed to the screen. Uh, in this case, we picked a. You can pick any color map from the plots uh, color schemes library. We can control how the uh, image is stretched. So we can apply uh, like a log stretch to the data uh, and so forth. Uh, here's an example of another color scheme, different color limits. We've adjusted the bias of the image a little bit. Uh, and missing and non-finite data are also supported. So uh, you can sometimes use NAND values in astronomy to represent parts of the data that are invalid or missing. Um, and that all works just fine. Uh, if we have multiple slices, uh, this package can let you combine them to create uh, color composites. So famously, this can be RGB composites, uh, red, green, and blue, but it can also be other uh, more exotic ones if you have another way of visualizing the data that you'd like. So I'll grab these red, green, and blue images of the Eagle Nebula to display. And if I just display them side by side on a grayscale color map, you see that they have totally different color ranges. Um, uh, but using the function uh, compose colors from this package, uh, it will 
uh, automatically take those three and uh, and render them using red, green, and blue color maps, and then add them together. Uh, and there's some uh, arguments like multiplier we can use to gently adjust the different levels from what the defaults are. Uh, then these red, green, and blue images uh, can then still be manipulated just like the original Astro image, so we can rotate it. Uh, we can access particular headers as well. So that's the, the, the in-view function for displaying images as uh, sort of PNGs. Uh, we can also plot them. So this uh, package includes plot recipes that uh, they use in view behind the scene in order to render an image uh, in a color bar, but then also supply additional information like um, physical axes. Uh, so right ascension and declination are fancy words astronomers use to mean sort of like a latitude and longitude within the sky. Uh, and this is one type of coordinate system images are often tagged with. Uh, so if we call mplot, takes all the same arguments as in view, uh, but now it's a plot a plot.jl plot, uh, and it has a, a, a coordinate grid applied to it, which in this case, it's showing coordinates that were tilted relative to the uh, how the image was captured. So the, the camera was captured on an angle, captured the scene on an angle. Um, in some cases, these coordinate grid lines can actually be curved, like we'll see in a minute, which is particularly tricky to get right. Uh, so here's an example of an image, which is actually a 3D data cube, which has some slightly more exotic axes. So uh, here we'll load a, a map of neutral hydrogen density in units of kelvins versus galactic latitude, galactic longitude, and velocity towards and away from the, uh, the telescope. So we've loaded that up, uh, just using load again, and we can visualize uh, this particular slice of it. I'll just select the slice using this Pluto UI slider. Uh, and we'll visualize that slice using a turbo color map with this arc sine, uh, hyperbolic arc sine stretch. And we see that the galactic latitude and longitude uh, are automatically picked up from the data. And uh, as well, the radial velocity, so the location in this cube is displayed at the top. And Kelvins are on the color bar. Uh, if I scroll through this cube, notice that I'm pulling the slice out here. Uh, but then when I go to plot it, it still remembers where it is in the original cube and the radial velocity associated with this particular slice. Uh, so this information is stored in header keys. Uh, called World Coordinate System. And there's a standard or a series of standards that explain how these different keys uh, describe a coordinate system of an image. Uh, so we can take another look at this. So I'll grab a particular slice out of the Eagle Nebula image from before, uh, from 900 to 1400, 1100 to 1500. Um, and you see, of course, it gets automatically rendered as we expect. But if we call mplot, uh, we get uh, image axes that actually reflect the location of this slice in the grander image. So it actually um, remembers where we grabbed this cutout uh, to keep the coordinates correct. Uh, and we can query a particular location um, using world to uh, for pix to world. So if I say pix to world slice, and I ask for the bottom left-hand corner, uh, pixel one, one, it'll tell me what the that corner is in uh, physical coordinates, right ascension and declination. Um, even accounting for the fact that we've grabbed this little uh, slice out of the larger image. Uh, so the last thing I'll just point to is an uh, example of loading complex data. So if we have uh, uh, an interferometer, for example, sometimes it's useful to take a Fourier transform of the image and visualize that in phase and magnitude. Uh, and if you just call mplot on a complex image like this one, um, it does separate at the phase and magnitude as we expect. Okay, so that's what we have so far in astro images. Uh, thank you for your time.